elsewhere. You know the skepticism among many Israelis insisting that this explosion was not their doing. Should Israel publicly release whatever intelligence they say they have that, according to our reporter, has been passed on to U.S. intelligence already? Hi, uh, Hi, Anderson. I, I'm, I'm going to say, first of all, the pictures from Gaza are heart-wrenching. Certainly no one wants to see, in Israel, wants to see these people suffer this way. Uh, very, very disturbing, but I'm also deeply, deeply dismayed. Once again, the world jumps to the conclusion that Israel's guilty. Headline in the New York Times, you know, Israel kills 500 people in the Gaza hospital. Um, these demonstrations around the world, um, and I have, you know, long memory. In 2006, there were nine uh, Palestinian children killed on a beach in, in Gaza, and the whole world blamed us, and it turned out it was a Hamas torpedo that killed them. And, in 2008, during the uh, first round of fighting with Hamas, I participated, I fought in that round. Uh, Hamas reported that 51 children were killed in it by an Israeli mortar in a UN school. Turned out it was completely made up. Everyone reports it as, as truth, and the damage it, it is done. And, and what's the source here? People come up about it's the Palestinian Health Ministry. The Palestinian Health Ministry, it's Hamas Health Ministry. It's like saying, it's like saying ISIS Health Ministry. It's like saying Al Qaeda. Ministry. It's, it's not exactly, you know, a, a, a believable, credible source. Um, and I do think, you know, let Israel publish. Well, uh, just, just to your point, though, just to your, to your point, though, I mean, look, I, I would say we have been very uh, accurate in our reporting. We are saying this was a blast. We don't know who is responsible. We have said what uh, Hamas health minister, uh, health ministry, Hamas run health ministry has said and, and what Israel has said. Um, I'm just asking if you think the Israeli government should put out the intelligence that it says it's had. Uh, you know, Colonel Conrica said uh, they're considering it. Do you think they should? I think they should. Certainly they should. But we know where every bomb falls. This is this is a very organized uh, army. We actually know where every artillery shell falls. It's all, it's all written down. It's all computerized. Certainly know where every aerial bomb. And um, I mean, does someone have belief that 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 uh, a, a failed rocket, a Hamas or, or a Palestinian Islamic Jihad rocket, couldn't cause this kind of damage? You're talking to somebody next door to my house. One of those rockets took down an entire apartment building. Believe me, one of those rockets to take down a hospital. Not just that. We don't know what's under this hospital. Hamas puts its headquarters under hospitals. It puts its arsenals under hospital. We don't know what this bomb hit. This this, this rocket. So it, there's much to be. Uh, investigated here, I think when the Israel army, when the IDF puts out a statement saying we didn't do it, it was a Palestinian Islamic Jihad rocket, they had evidence. And I think you're right, I think we should share that uh, to the greatest degree possible without sort of exposing sensitive intelligence sources, because these are uh, intelligence sources apparently that according to Orrin Lieberman, your correspondent uh, at the Pentagon, these sources have been shared with the Pentagon by the Israeli military. Um, I think they should make public, again, the degree to which that is possible not endangering um, intelligence assets that we might have in God. Let, let me ask you, um, uh, Coach Orr was talking about how this might impact the uh, attempt to create some sort of humanitarian uh, relief down in the south uh, of Gaza with things coming across the border, the, the Egyptian border. Uh, obviously, from a just beyond the humanitarian issue from a military standpoint I assume it's in Israel's best interest to have as many civilians uh, go to that southern place and the more supplies they have there the more civilians would likely come how concerned are you that given what has happened here uh, the, 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 the large number of fatalities that, uh, at this hospital that that's going to complicate your, whatever Israel's plans are on the ground in Gaza I would think, and again, I, I want to stress that I'm not a spokesman for the government there, Anderson, so I have my own opinions. The Israeli public opinion is running very high against uh, providing this type of aid to, to the Palestinians. Uh, there's a deep feeling among the Israeli public that, uh, that the, Palestinian, the Palestinian population in Gaza was highly supportive of Hamas, that many hundreds, if not thousands of Palestinians, not members of Hamas, participated in the massacres of October 7th. They came to the, the breaches in the wall and they killed Israelis. They, they kidnapped Israelis. We believe that a number of our hostages are not in the hands of Hamas, they're actually in the hands of individual families uh, in Gaza who want to sell these hostages. Um, so it, it's a political issue here. I would like to see more aid personally. 
And I'm sure that this, what has occurred, this tragedy will probably strengthen the president's hand uh, in trying to persuade Israeli leaders to go against public opinion. It's, it will, it's what you call diplomacy, a heavy lift uh, for these leaders. But at the end of the day, it's not really our decision, it's Egypt's decision. Uh, our major crossing into, into Gaza was the, uh, we translated it, it's ironically, it's the vineyard of peace, uh, Kevin Le Shalom. That crossing has been blasted by Hamas. Uh, the Israelis who work there are dead. Uh, the approaches are shelled by Hamas. So uh, it's very difficult to tell, say, Israeli drivers, hey, take that truck and drive to that crossing and, and risk your life. Uh, that's a very difficult, uh, that's a heavy lift. Um, I think the issue is, is Egypt. And Egypt is super, super sensitive to anything that comes across that rock uh, crossing, either going from Gaza into Sinai or into from Sinai into Gaza. I think the major issue there is going to be persuading the Egyptians uh, to open up that crossing. Uh, Michael Oren, thank you for your time. In addition to the hospital blast, there is the mass migration now underway in Gaza. We were just talking about it. I touched on it earlier also with Chris Award. Earlier tonight, I spoke with a student named Dunia Abu Rama, one of the hundreds of thousands of people who has moved further south. Dania, can you just tell us wh where you are now and, and what your situation is? Um, but before I start, uh, I just want to say that I'm here to represent every civilian and every woman who is trying to have uh, basic rights and to live a normal, peaceful life. And right now, I evacuated uh, to the south as I followed uh, the instructions. Uh, they told us to evacuate from the north to the south. So my family and I uh, evacuated to a house, uh, to one of our friend's house. And uh, we're staying with 57 people here. You're staying with 57 people in this one house? Yes. It's one room, one kitchen, and one bath. So we are all sharing this place and do you feel safer now where you are obviously there are still strikes going on in the south uh, of course not in, in the whole gaza strip there is no place is safe there's no place safe we hear the bombs we, we see them we feel the pressure after the bombs goes down i'm sure mm -hmm. you've heard about the the hospital uh that there, there was an explosion at the hospital. Hamas is saying it was uh, an Israeli strike. The IDF is saying yes, it, it was a rocket that fell short from uh, from uh, Islamic Jihad. When you heard of it, what did you think? Um, all I think about is uh, the people who were trying to feel safe or uh, trying to have the medical treatment and now they are killed uh, 500 people were killed now or maybe more uh, this is a real massacres and this is inhuman in your in humanitarian so all I think about is how these people they, they die they, they, they were killed and we are talking about a lot of people that were killed, uh, a lot of dreams were killed. Uh, people who thought that were taking medical treatment and uh, be okay in the next days, and now they are gone. So uh, I'm, 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 ter I'm terrified if this is gonna happen to us either, uh, as a civilian and who was um, trying to feel safe and maybe in, in the next moments where they're gonna be bombs and we're gonna be killed also. So all I think about is um, how, how am I gonna be safe? And, and well, I want to be safe. I want to have, I want to feel that uh, me and my family are safe. This is all I think about. You're 22 years old, you're, you're a student. Um, you're you're yes. studying architecture, is that right? Yes, I am. I'm an architecture student. I'm in my senior year. Uh, before this event happened, uh, I was preparing uh, for my graduation project. And uh, I, 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 I can't 
working with you what I was what I was what I was doing or what I was preparing because these events happened and uh, the whole university was destroyed. Somebody sitting in the United States watching this or sitting in their home in France watching this what do you yeah. want them to know about what has happened in your town and what has happened to you all I, all, all I want them to know that there are uh, civilians people who wants people who wish to live a normal peaceful life uh, to feel safe because we are human and all we want is to have uh, our rights and live peacefully As a, as a woman and as a girl, um, all I want in this life is to, to educate and to graduate and have a job and have a family. This is all I want them to, I want them to know that there's a, a lot of people here and I'm re representing every person here, every civilian, that we want our basic, simple, simple uh, rights and to feel safe. Yeah, that's it. You want what we all want. Yeah, and you have it, and we don't. We don't. I, I, I sleep, and I don't know if I'm going to wake up or not, or, or I'm going to wake up and have my family next to me or not. And maybe I'll go to sleep, and I wake up that and I see the ceiling are... The whole building that I'm staying in is destroyed, or I'm gonna be killed. I don't have these rights, and, and this is what I'm, I wanted the world to know: that these rights are are thing are things that all people have, but we don't. Donia, thank you for taking the time to talk to us, and, and I'm so sorry for what is happening. You're welcome. Much more ahead from here in a moment, including perspective from retired four-star general and former CIA director David Petraeus. We'll be right back. Now's the time for cleaner indoor air with an air duct clean from Stanley Steamer. You've noticed we're carpet cleaning, but we've been cleaning air ducts for over 20 years. We do things the right way, cleaning your entire system. So if you need an air duct cleaning, call 1-800-STEAMER today. This is AG1, foundational nutrition to support whole body, brain, and gut health. Vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, adaptogens, functional mushrooms, all that and this. Start at drinkag1.com. It's nothing. Sounds like something. When you have not your heart burn in that sense of somebody. Pepto coats and soothes for fast relief when you need it most. Choosing a treatment for your chronic migraine, 15 or more headache days a month, each lasting four hours or more, can be overwhelming. So ask your doctor about Botox. Botox prevents headaches in adults with a chronic migraine before they even start. It's the number one prescribed brand of chronic migraine treatment. So far, more than 5 million Botox treatments have been given to over 850,000 chronic migraine patients. Effects of Botox may spread hours to weeks after injection, causing serious symptoms. Alert your doctor right away, as difficulty swallowing, speaking, breathing, eye problems, or muscle weakness can be signs of a life-threatening condition. Side effects may include allergic reactions, neck and injection site pain, fatigue and headache. Don't receive Botox if there's a skin infection. Tell your doctor your medical history, muscle or nerve conditions and medications, including botulinum toxins, as these may increase the risk of serious side effects. In a survey, 92% of current users said they wish they'd talked to their doctor and started Botox sooner. So ask your doctor if Botox is right for you. Learn how AbbVie could help you save on Botox. There are some things that go better together. Burger and fries, soup and salad. Thank you. Like your workplace benefits and retirement savings. With Voya, considering all your financial choices together can help you make smarter decisions. 
for a more confident financial future. Hey, it's Hand and Bicycle. You can't do that by yourself. Hoya, well planned, well invested, well protected. How come groups of rich men get to decide who lives and who dies? That's all here. You're really the kid, ain't you? We are now effectively at war. If I want justice, I have to take the law into my own hands. This ain't all over here. It's gonna be a dangerous end, won't it? We have a war to win. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile, there's Ranger. Offering professional grade supplies backed by product experts. Call, click Ranger.com, or just stop by. Ranger for the ones who get it done. and heard multiple airstrikes in the direction of northern Gaza. The Israeli Defense Forces have not yet commented on the strikes, but bringing more information on them as we get it. The strikes come as these new pictures come to CNN of protesters in Lebanon trying to break through security barrier barriers near the U.S. Embassy outside of Beirut. Anger over that hospital blast in Gaza, the Palestinian health officials say killed hundreds. As we've been reporting, Israel has blamed Islamic Jihad for the blast. Gaza officials blame Israel. Hezbollah has called for a day of unprecedented anger. That's what they're calling it. Ben Wiedemann joins us now from southern Lebanon. Ben, what do we know about the reaction in Lebanon? Uh, what are you doing? Well, it's, it's over now. It's almost uh, 4 o'clock in the morning in uh, Beirut. But what we saw was that hundreds, actually thousands of people headed toward the American embassy, which is about uh, 10 miles north of Beirut. Uh, there they gathered in the square that's at the bottom of the hill that leads to the American embassy. And they tried to break through barriers set up by the Lebanese police. Now, in the process, the Lebanese police started to respond uh, with tear gas, so there, it was quite a chaotic uh, scene there, but uh, scenes repeated in other places as well. In Ramallah on the West Bank, uh, we saw Palestinians clashing with Palestinian security forces uh, while they were trying to protest, uh, many of them, in fact, calling for the downfall of Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas, who for many Palestinians uh, feel has been passive during the war in Gaza, uh, has been largely cooperative with the Israelis over the year. They see him as a collaborator, many of them. So they, they, you have to keep in mind that when there are shock waves like the war in Gaza, those shock waves can shake many of the very unpopular regimes uh, in the Arab world. Elsewhere in Amman, Jordan, uh, protesters uh, converged upon the Israeli embassy uh, there, they set fires around it, they saw it, tried to break in, uh, the uh, Jordanian police had to go in and really fight with them to, to beat them uh, back, but certainly this is indicative of the level of anger across the Arab world at the situation. There were massive protests in Baghdad uh, as well. Now as far as what's this going to mean perhaps tomorrow, we know that in Beirut Hezbollah has called for a massive day of rage. A large protest is going to be held there, and here on the southern border of Lebanon, which borders Israel, the expectation is that perhaps Hezbollah's wrath is going to be felt on the other side of the border, that this may be one day when they are going to open fire more than they have been recently, which is quite a lot. In fact, in the last hour or so, we've been hearing a fair amount of distant thuds coming from the direction of the border with Israel. Anderson? Mayor Ben Riedemann, uh, thank you. The protests come hours before President Biden is due to arrive in Israel. The president also planned to attend a summit in Jordan that has been canceled after the Gaza hospital blast. Jeremy Diamond is in Jerusalem awaiting the president's arrival. What more we know about the cancellation of President Biden's meeting with Arab leaders? Well, Anderson, as Ben was just saying, this blast at a hospital in Gaza led to pretty rapid uproar in the Arab world, and Arab leaders came under uh, pretty intense pressure uh, from uh, their populations to 
not only condemn Israel for uh, this blast, which Israel denies it was responsible for, but also to show that they were standing up, not only to Israel, but also to Israel's biggest supporter, which is, of course, the United States. And all of that effectively made the president's planned summit in Amman, Jordan, to meet not only with the Palestinian and the Jordanian leaders, but also the Egyptian president, uh, effectively untenable. Mm -hmm. in, in, also clear that the humanitarian situation in Gaza was going to be at the forefront of those meetings. And so now I think the real question is, uh, will the progress that uh, Secretary Blinken seems to have been making on that humanitarian front to allow a humanitarian quarter uh, of aid to flow into Gaza, of American citizens to flow out of Gaza, will that progress be squandered uh, in light of what has happened? How much is the hospital explosion expected to complicate the president's meeting with the uh, Israeli's prime minister? Well, as we've seen, uh, the Israel Defense Forces have been trying to put out information to get their side of the story out to say effectively that they are not responsible for this blast, blaming instead Islamic Jihad. They've been doing that in part of course because they want to correct the record as they see it but also of course they there's a greater sense of urgency around that effort given the fact that the president is on his way to israel right now and set to land here in a matter of hours and in fact i'm told uh, that the president is going to be presented with that information directly by israeli officials when he is here on the ground and all of this you know this this blast at the hospital regardless of who is responsible it will put a uh, higher focus a spotlight perhaps on what we've been sort of starting to see a little bit more from the president in recent days. Yes, he is continuing to say that he supports Israel's right to defend itself, to go after Hamas in any way that it sees fit, but we've also seen him put uh, an increasing spotlight in recent days on the toll of civilian casualties inside of Gaza, and I'm told that that is going to be a focus of the president's message there uh, tomorrow. In fact, John Kirby, the National Security Council spokesman, he was just doing uh, a gaggle with reporters on Air Force One where he said that the president will be asking some tough questions of Israeli officials uh, when he is on the ground. But again, comes back to this bigger picture with some of these cancellations happening uh, and the president's trip effectively shortened. Will he be able to deliver the same results that he intended to do uh, when he arrives here tomorrow uh, with this, uh, all of these changes at the last minute? Anderson. Jeremy Diamond, thanks very much. More perspective now on the, uh, the deadly hospital blast in Gaza. Joining me is retired General David Petraeus, former head of the U.S. Central Command, which oversees forces in the Middle East. He's also a former CIA director and author of the new book, Conflict, the Evolution of Warfare from 1945 to Ukraine, which is out today. General Petraeus, thank you for being here. There are obviously conflicting reports tonight on the cause of this uh, explosion of the hospital in Gaza. Um, we have seen incidents like this before where there was massive loss of horrific loss of life and there's this finger pointing how does this change things on the ground how do you see it well the challenge is that even if and i believe the idf spokesperson who came out and, and laid mm. out uh, their confidence uh, mm. that this was not a bomb dropped by their aircraft that it was a rocket launched by the palestinian islamic jihad and i suspect they have some very good intelligence and surveillance uh, footage or what have you that enabled them to have the confidence to make that statement. They're trying to declassify some of this, but of course they don't want to disclose sources and methods that are very sensitive. The problem <coughs> is that even if that is correct, and I believe it, uh, there is a disbelief, uh, and this has been used by those who wish Israel ill, uh, to stoke the kinds of demonstrations that we have seen. And of course the concern is the regionalization of what is already an exceedingly difficult situation uh, just in Gaza, a fiendishly a challenging mission for the Israeli Defense Forces if they are to go in and clear and hold these areas to destroy Hamas. But now you have the unrest in these other locations. Some of this is what was feared, that there would be further unrest on the West Bank, that in some fashion Hezbollah would feel compelled that they have to employ some of the 150,000 rockets that they have in southern Lebanon, knowing they're going to get hammered in return as they did in 2006, and probably not wanting that, but again, feeling that they're compelled to do that. And there are other vulnerabilities around the theater. We still have thousands of American forces in Iraq at the request uh, of the Iraqi government, helping their forces keep an eye on the remnants of the Islamic State, similar deployment uh, in northeastern Syria, and then, of course, forces all up and down 
in the Gulf states uh, across the, the Gulf from Iran. So there's a lot of concern that, is, that should be there, uh, and the, there's going to have to be a major effort uh, to convince uh, individuals that what they're protesting uh, is wrong. They should be protesting against, uh, in this case, the Islamic Jihad, the ally of the Hamas terrorist organization. The Israeli Defense Forces have said in the past that some 30% of rockets fired from Gaza misfire, fall short, often landing in, in Gaza itself. Do you believe that's accurate? I think it's, it's very close to accurate. Again, our experience when we were on the receiving end of a lot of rockets that were provided by Iran to Shia militia in Iraq and elsewhere uh, was that an awful lot of them don't, don't function perfectly. Um, so I think that that's a reasonable estimation. I'm sure they have the data uh, that would back that up. The bottom line is that these types of rockets, a lot, large number of them do uh, not function properly. And there is a history of that happening uh, over many, many occasions in Gaza itself, that they don't get all the way to Israel, fall short of the target, fail to ignite properly, and so forth. So this is a believable, uh, and again, if they have evidence of that, that they've seen uh, intelligence uh, footage or what have you, uh, it would be great if they could disclose it, although I understand why sensitive methods need to be safeguarded. If you were with the IDF, I mean, you, you, you were a great uh, military strategist. If you were uh, going to do a ground operation, a ground invasion of, of Gaza, wouldn't it be in the IDF's interest to have as many civilians in the south as possible and to provide or somehow allow humanitarian organizations to provide tented shelters, running water, food, and the like to encourage as many civilians to stay there as possible? Yes, and I think that I suspect that President Biden will be discussing those very issues uh, when he meets with Prime Minister Netanyahu and his war cabinet. Uh, and if I could, this also just highlights the enormous challenges of conducting any military operation in a populated urban area. We had a lot of experience with that uh, over the years, in Iraq in particular, some in Afghanistan as well. And these operations are very, very hard. Remember that it took the Iraqi security forces nine months to clear Mosul of the Islamic State. And that's a city about the same size as Gaza City, and we were supporting that operation with a lot of drones and air power and other systems. So these are very, very tough operations. And here you're facing an enemy who doesn't mm -hmm. wear a uniform, who blends in with the population, uses the population, and likely will use the hostages, nearly 200 of them, uh, as human shields. Uh, they'll have suicide bombers. So the challenges of, of this are enormous. And I suspect, to, to take this out a little bit further, Anderson, that the other conversation is going to be, OK, we understand the need to destroy Hamas to render them incapable of accomplishing their mission without reconstitution. Um, you're going to take a huge number of losses to do that. We support that. But what happens then? Uh, especially if they take out the Hamas political wing, which they have said they intend to dismantle as well. What's going to run Gaza? Who's going to restore the basic services? Israel doesn't want to reoccupy Gaza. Understandably, the president has cautioned them against doing that. So who will do that? If you just go in and, and destroy Hamas, in other words, it's really then a, a lawn mowing, but you know, right down to the dirt, the moment you leave, the grass is going to begin to grow again. So there has to be a force that comes in. It would be great if there could be, in fact, Arab countries that would support this. They're always concerned about the Palestinians. This would be a great way to demonstrate that concern, have an interim uh, international authority of some type, ideally sponsored, uh, under the auspices of the UN, but with a strong lead nation, because they're going to have to then conduct not just nation building, not just the restoration of basic services and repair of damaged infrastructure, oh. get schools and clinics and uh, roads repaired and all of that. They're also going to have to fight the remnants of Hamas, which are going to try to come back and take control of the territory again. And just finally, we are hearing from a number of Israeli officials, former and current, lately, that it's not just Hamas and, and its affiliate groups, as long as others, uh, but that there are thousands of supporters of, of those organizations, uh, which I don't understand. And every perilous situation of bullying.
ways that won't go away and come back. Try to take over, blend in and do so. A perilous situation. Filled with problematic scenarios of bullies like Hamas. Coming back and trying to take over again once all is destroyed. A perilous situation of bullies who won't go away. Go away. Go away. Bullies who won't go away and continue to stop progress for the higher good. They try to take over with the same old age guard perspectives on life, violence, death, destruction, putting others under their control. Come on, man, you got to get away from that. It's old. Get on with the new member, art and peace and creativity, health, evolutionary unfoldment. Strive towards the highest, not the lowest. You bullies, once you're gone from there, don't come back. Don't come back. Don't come back. Uh, the song by Paul Beckman, Paul the Rainbow Song, also the new and first leader of humankind in the free world, created October 17th, 2023. Go to Palu, let's see, go to Internet Solutions and Songs 24-7 at Paulu Rainbow Song bio on YouTube. Then look for movie song reviews by Palu, a playlist. Then look for a special note videos and song videos under that category, a special note. This will give you an explanation of my main, mainstream name, Paul Beckman, new age name, Paulu Rainbow Song, and also the utterance I say, also the new and first leader of humankind in the free world, plus an explanation of much more. Thank you very much. God bless. Namaste. And honor the divine in all.